All right, everybody, I am back with a brand new DC update. I know you guys have been waiting, and I'm still getting my time sucked away by this cabinet that I am working on. I am currently configuring all the software uh, for it to work right, and it is, oh my gosh, the amount of time it has sucked away from me. And I will be doing a video of a tour of my arcade machines, and I'm going to do a making of of all three, well, all four cabinets. I'm going to show you guys. I'll do a video of the making of of all the arcades that I do have. Uh, one of them I built myself from scratch. And so uh, we will, I'll definitely show that to you guys at some point. But today's DC update is interesting. Nobody is holding back anymore. Uh, everybody who is former Warner Brothers is out there speaking out against the studio. And they're not afraid to do it. The only one who is slightly holding back is David Ayer himself, and he has his reasons for doing that. He does want to see his film still released in the future, so he's still being cordial towards Warner Brothers. But he's also made comments. He was in an interview with John Bernthal, and I talked about this in my last video, where he had made some pretty interesting comments about Warner Brothers and just having to fight the studio. But let's take a look at the photos that I have grabbed over the last couple of days. All right, so the first thing I have for you guys here is this picture of Christopher Reeve as Superman. I really like this photo quite a bit. And this is from the Caped Wonder Superman podcast. It says this photograph was originally shot by Frank Connor using Kodak Tri-X B&W film. I was the first to reveal it to the world many years ago. Jim Bowers, Caped Wonder founder. That is an awesome photo. That is Superman. Uh, yeah, I grew up with him as Superman, loved those movies, and oh man, that is a true, that is a great photo. So these have to do with the whole David Ayer thing and this interview that he had with John Bernthal. And Entertainment Weekly posted this, and it said, Ayer, David Ayer isn't done defending his original vision for Suicide Squad. The director says that Warner Brothers turned his dark, soulful movie into an effing comedy. He said, David Ayer says Suicide Squad broke him. That's pretty sad. And during that interview, he talked about, you know, being beat down by the studio and how they they just took this. At any rate, people are not afraid to talk about how Warner Brothers has been screwing with their stuff anymore. People are just becoming unleashed with it, which is interesting. So this continues, uh, this is also from Variety talking about that same interview and Suicide Squad broke David Ayer. Deadpool opened, right? And they never tested Batman versus Superman. They got hammered by all the critics. Then it's like, okay, we're going to turn David Ayer's dark, soulful movie into an effing comedy now. And that's basically what happened behind the scenes here, that the studio pivoted when Deadpool opened. And then they saw this Batman versus Superman, and they thought it was going to be all dark. The critics came in and bashed Batman versus Superman, and they were like, oh my gosh, we need to do something more like Marvel. And so they took this movie that was going to be in line with, with what had already been done, and they totally screwed it up. And in this, he talked about how some people have already seen his film, that he actually owns a copy of his movie, and everybody who has seen it has said the exact same thing about Zack Snyder's Justice League. Like, how did the studio release that when they had this? It's, I really hope we get to see his film someday because what we got was just a shell of it. And I have a feeling we're going to have the same situation where I cannot even watch the theatrical version of Justice League. And it's going to be the same thing with David Ayer's Suicide Squad. And I will tell you, I like the original Suicide Squad movie more than I do James Gunn's Suicide Squad. So uh, even though it wasn't David Ayer, I still think it's a better film than what the Suicide Squad was. But hopefully we'll get to see this one day. I think all the talk about it is keeping it front and center. Now this is funny. I don't know why this is predicting. It actually happened. Box office analyst predicts Blue Beetle to be another massive flop for Warner Brothers. Predicts it will lose around $100 million. And it's a shame because out of the movies that have been released, the last three films, this one was by far the best of the three films. And we're actually going to see what the viewership is on The Flash. There's some surprising news on the viewership of The Flash since it has hit 
HBO Max. And I haven't watched it since it hit, but it's going to be interesting when we get to that photo. Now, this came up from Ben Affleck, and he he had said this is something that happened during the SnyderCon, and some people may have seen this and may have not if you didn't watch the whole thing. But Ben Affleck, when discussing Deathstroke and his Batman film during SnyderCon this year, he said there were a number of them, villains, that I was kind of exploring. And the plans were to make interesting, nuanced, complex characters, in particular to the character you mentioned, Deathstroke. So I was at the time really trying to hone in and focus on that character and get into depth and detail about him to make him seem seem as impressive as I felt there was the opportunity to do. That's the only detail I have for you. So he didn't want to give out anymore. And I think more, again, this goes along with David Ayer's Suicide Squad, his film that he was going to do. People who have read that script said it was the best Batman script that's ever been written. And it's a shame that that movie never happened. I'm hoping one day maybe it will. All right, so here's the main reason I did this video today. I read this whole article today, and it was very interesting. This is the former D.C. president. Uh, she, I don't think she's there anymore. And, oh, I really wish I would have grabbed her name. Gosh dang it. I should have brought, I should have kept the article up. I, don't, I didn't want to read the article to you guys, so I'm going to give you the highlights of it. But she's a former D.C. president, and she thought Josh, Joss Weddens, I can't even say his name right. Joss Whedon's Justice League was terrible. Those were her words. Terrible. And in this interview, it was this interview was actually done a while ago. It was done back in July, and it was kind of held back, and, and it was just revised, and now it was just posted. And in this interview at BleedingCool.com, so you can go read the whole interview, she talked about how there was a perception that Zack Snyder was actually in charge of DC, but she said, in fact, nobody was in charge of DC. It wasn't like Marvel where they had a studio with their own budgets and everything. She said nobody was in charge at DC, at Warner Brothers. It, they, there were no meetings to talk about who was going to be in charge. There was no cohesive road forward that they just did whatever. And she thought, you know, in hindsight, she said there were a lot of things she wished she would have done differently and that Zack Snyder was never in charge, that nobody was in charge, and that, you know, they thought bringing in Joss Whedon. Joss Whedon was supposedly that shiny gem that they needed to bring in, but instead he kind of screwed everything up even worse. And then his cut was, she called it terrible, that it was absolute garbage. It was kind of an interesting read. If you guys want to know more about that, I would recommend going to see what she said about uh, the the just the culture down there at Warner Brothers, and it's it's obvious that they they didn't have a plan. But the crazy thing is, what they did have a plan. They did release a slate of stuff at the Comic Con that they were going to do, and they just never followed through with it because they kept pivoting. And that's because there was nobody in charge of DC Studios, and now there is, and it's not what anybody asked for, which is just crazy. Now this was interesting. I wanted to go read the article, and I haven't had a time to go. I haven't had time to go read this article, but it said alternate the Flash ending would have set up the new DCU. Why they didn't do that is beyond me. Like, that's what they should have done. I mean, this is kind of what what James Gunn claimed this movie was, was a reset to the DCEU, up to the DCU. But the movie, for people who have seen it, it didn't do anything of the sort to reset or fix anything. It it just, it's, I, this movie leaves everything in limbo, which is weird. So this kind of made me laugh. It said, The Flash doesn't quite win this race. The Flash can't beat Black Adam's first weekend max streaming numbers. This had worse streaming numbers than Black Adam. And I'm going to say this and back it up again with my final thoughts here. People were coming back to watch DC movies with Black Adam. Black Adam sold a ton of copies on Blu-ray, 4K, and DVD. You know what movies didn't? Especially... The Suicide Squad. There's a good indication on how people feel, you know, people who love movies and love physical media, is if they want to own it. Nobody really cared about The Suicide Squad. People bought Black Adam. People went to go see Black Adam. People were streaming Black Adam. You know what's not happening? Is The Flash. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Because James Gunn is rebooting everything, and it makes everything irrelevant, and people know that. 
It's ridiculous what is going on. The studio has sabotaged these DC characters. They've taken a franchise that I love, and they've destroyed it. They have absolutely destroyed it, and James Gunn ain't going to save it. And anybody who thinks he is, you've got another thing coming. He is not capable of delivering what needs to be done to make these characters. And I got to tell you, you've got to focus on Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. That was one thing that 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 former DC president made the comment that she goes, we have Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, and they didn't capitalize on it. Like it, how do you not make that the greatest movie that's ever been released? It's because the studio is run by morons. They just are. And that's not changing anytime soon. All right, so there's my DC update for the day. I will be going to see Equalizer 3 in just a a few hours. So when I get back from that movie, I will be reviewing that. And I got to tell you, I loved the first Equalizer. And the second one was decent, but nowhere near the level of the first one. And uh, Anton Foucault is telling us he's the director. And he said that this new movie is actually a, it's an unofficial sequel to Man on Fire. So I'm actually looking forward to seeing this movie a little bit later, and I will have a review for that up as soon as I get back. All right, we will see you guys on the next update.